Ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Allahumma akhrijni min thulumati al-waham Wa akrimni bil nur al-faham Allahumma akhtah alayna abuab rahmatik Wa anshur alayna khazaina ulumik Bi rahmatika ya arham al-rahimin Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Wa ajjil faraja Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show you a video of last week's activity. If you sent in your photo, look out for yourself. Enjoy. In the deepest part of the ocean, bed, a creature crawling on his belly knows that Layla 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 There is no God but Allah Riding on the crest of a wave in the sea A dolphin squeaks and he whistles to me Says Layla Layla Every bird has a prayer that he knows so well, praising Allah in their very own tongues, leaving their homes with the work. They do their best, and Allah fulfills what is due for me. He's already written, so surrender and say to Allah, I belong. I say, Layla, Layla, Layla. There is no God but Allah On the golden plains of the Serengeti A wise old elephant trumpets to me Says Layla Illallah Layla Illallah There is no God but Allah Underneath the baobab tree where the cheetah lives and her cubs roam free, they say, Layla illallah, Layla Every living thing was made from water, fashioned and perfected by Allah. Some walk tall and some are small, and some lay deep on the ocean floor. So from the earth to the beautiful sky, the alternation of day and night, signs and creation, we all shall dance to return to Allah, most forgiving, most kind. We say, Layla, there is no God but Allah. When the vultures swoop down upon their prey, they cackle and they echo, but they all say the same. They say, La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. In the murky waters of an old riverbed, popping up his head, the hippopotamus said, Like. Thank you so much to everybody who shared their photos. You guys did an amazing, amazing job with last week's activity. It was so creative, so well done. Don't forget to share today's activity photos too, okay? So we're going to start with our songs. Everybody with your five fingers up. Five fingers up, everyone. Nice and loud. You have to help me, okay? All right, all together. There are five panjatan. Did you know that's true? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We know that's true. There is Muhammad. There is Ali. There is Fatima Hassan and Hussein. There is Muhammad. There is Ali. There is Fatima Hassan and Hussein. Well done, all of you. And now we need your big arms. Where are your big arms, everybody? There we go. All together now. Allah is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There is nothing that he cannot do. The rivers are his. The mountains are his. The stars are his and so are we. 
Allah is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There is nothing that He cannot do for you, and you, and you, and you, and for me. Yes, Allah is amazing. He is so strong. He is so mighty. And He has given us so many blessings. So many that we can't even count them using our fingers, right? There are that many. So now we're going to put up our hands and we're going to thank Allah for all the blessings that He has given us. So can I see everybody's Alhamdulillah hands? Yes, beautiful. And you have to sing along with me. Are you ready? Okay, nice and loud. Alhamdulillah. Oh, thank you, Allah. I can see. Alhamdulillah. I can hear. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Allah, for your blessings on me. I can talk. Alhamdulillah. I can walk. Alhamdulillah, thank you Allah for your blessings on me. Well done. And Allah says, the more you thank me, the more I'm going to give you. Allah is so kind, isn't he? Yes, he is. We are so, so lucky to have an amazing Allah. And now for our final song, we're going to sing the Islamic months. Are you ready for that one? Yes, all together. Muharram Safar, Rabi'ul Awwal, Rabi'ul Thani. These are the months of Islam. Jamaad al-Ula, Jamaad al-Ukhra, Rajab and Shaban. Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan and Shawwal. Dhul Qa'da and Dhul Hijjah. These are the months of Islam. Well done. Excellent job, all of you. And in which month of the Islamic calendar do we do our Hajj? Does anybody know? It is the last month, the month of the Hijjah. That is a special month in which all the Muslims go to Mecca, where the Kaaba is, to perform Okay, and we're going to learn all about that in a little while after we do our ayat. Okay, so the first ayat that we are going to do is we're going to ask Allah to increase in our knowledge. So all together, Rabbi Zidni Ilman. Oh Allah, please increase in my knowledge. Rabbi Zidni Ilman. Well done. The next one, Allah is telling us in the Quran, you can eat and you can drink, but do not waste. Wa kulu, wa shrabu, wa la tusrifu. One more time. Wa kulu, wa shrabu, wa la tusrifu. Eat and drink, but do not waste. There are so many people out there in the world, in places like Yemen, in Syria, and so many places all over the world where people don't have food or clean water. So we have to make sure that we don't waste our water and we don't do a strap when we are eating our food, okay? The next one is for our parents, okay? Rabbir Hamhuma, Kama Rabbayani, Sabira. Oh Allah, have mercy on them the way they had mercy on me when I was a little baby. That's right. Our parents take such good care of us, don't they? They buy us the clothes that we need. They buy us toys and games. They, our mommy makes us our favorite food, right? And they take us to all these fun places. They play with us. So they do so much for us, don't they? So we also pray to Allah to have mercy on them. Okay? So well done. Now Allah says, I have created the night time for you to rest. Waja'alna no mako subata. Again, one more time. Waja'alna no mako subata. 
Allah has created the night time for us to rest because our bodies need rest after the whole day of playing and having fun or going to school. So we spend our night resting. So the next day we have lots of energy to do everything that we want to do. And the last ayah, Allah is telling us that He loves those who are clean. Wallahu, you are here. Allah loves those who are clean. One more time. Wallahu, you have Well done. So when mommy tells you it's time to go for a shower, we're not going to run away. We're going to go and have a nice shower and smell nice because Allah loves it when we smell fresh and clean. Okay, well done. Okay, so today we are talking about Hajj, okay, and Hajj, what is it? All right, I'm sure many of you know a little bit about what Hajj is. It's a very special journey that all Muslims should take at least once in their lifetime if they have enough money, okay. And the Hajj is beautiful because Muslims from all over the entire world gather in Mecca, where the Holy Kaaba is. And they all wear only two pieces of white cloth. And it doesn't matter who has a bigger house, or who has a bigger car, or who has more toys, or who has a, all this money, it does not matter. Everybody who goes to Hajj, who goes to the Kaaba, they are all equal in the eyes of Allah and Allah says only the one whose heart is clean and who has faith in me only those people are more special than the rest otherwise no one can say I am better than the other you have to check am I a good person am I not lying am I being kind am I sharing do I pray my namaz do I listen to my mommy right if you do all those things, then you are very special to Allah, all right? But if you're fighting with your brother and your sister, or you're saying bad words, or you're being grumpy all the time, then we must ask ourselves, does Allah like people who are like that? Or does Allah like those who are kind and happy, right? So when we go to Hajj, we wear the same clothes as everybody else, okay? And what we're going to do now is we're going to see why Allah has made Mecca so special. Do you want to find out why Mecca is so special? Okay, so I'm going to put on a video for you to see. And we're going to learn why Mecca is so special to Allah. I'm over here! Where? I'm in Mecca! Medina! I'm Dahis! I'm over there! <laughs> Where? I'm over here! Where's Kazwa? Assalamu alaikum! Can you guess where I am right now? I am in Mecca! And behind me is the glorious Kaaba. Whenever we pray anywhere in the world, we must pray facing the Kaaba. Did you know that Mecca is Allah's favorite city in the whole wide world? and the city in which Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born in. Mecca is in Saudi Arabia and has a population of around 2 million people. Millions of people from around the world come to Mecca to perform Hajj and Umrah. In Mecca, 
You can also visit the cave of Hira. This is the cave where Angel Jibreel alayhi salam came down to reveal the Quran to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam for the very first time. Mecca is so special that many of the prophets such as Ibrahim, Musa and Yunus alayhi salam came to visit it. Mecca is also where the famous well of Zamzam is. Did you know that if you pray next to the Kaaba, each prayer is multiplied by a hundred thousand? That means if you pray two rakat, you get the reward of two hundred thousand rakat. How amazing is that? That's how special Mecca is, and that's how much Allah loves it. I really enjoyed myself here in Mecca. Well, children, I hope you love Mecca more now. I know I do. Inshallah, one day you can be here too. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so this is why Makkah is so special to Allah, right? And we all pray to Allah, inshallah, we all get a chance to go to the Kaaba to perform Hajj or Umrah, inshallah. Now, if you guys remember when we did the story of Prophet Ibrahim, we talked about Bibi Hajra. Do you remember Bibi Hajra? Yeah, does the name ring a bell? And her baby, Prophet Ismail. Okay, so we're going to recap a little bit of that story to see how the special water of the Zamzam was made. Okay? So I want you to all sit back, relax, and enjoy the story. Okay? Prophet Ibrahim and Bibi Hajra lived in the mountains, the mountains of Mecca. Now, once Prophet Ibrahim had to travel, so he had to leave Bibi Hajra and Baby Ismail behind. Okay, and he went. Now, after a little while, the food and water that Bibi Hajra had started to finish, and the little baby got really thirsty. So, Bibi Hajra, because she was a mummy and she loved her baby, right? She had to go and look for some water. Now, there were two big hills, like you can see over here as well. We have two hills, one called Safa, and one here called Marwa. And Bibi Hajra tried to look for water. Now, when it's really hot and the sun is shining from above, when you look far away, it's as if you can see water in the distance. So Bibi Hajra thought that she could see water, so she ran. She ran towards the mountain of Safa, but there was no water. And she turned around. She thought she could see water by the mountain of Marwa. So she started running towards the mountain of Marwa. And she did the running backwards and forwards seven times. And that is why during Hajj, we also walk between the mountains of Safa and Marwa seven times and that is called Sa'i. Okay, now Bibi Hajra couldn't find any water. When she had left Bibi Ismail under the protection of Allah, and baby was crying and kicking his little feet. And suddenly where he was kicking his feet, beautiful, pure water gushed out from under the ground. And that water is called the water of Zamzam. Okay, and until today, that pure water is still there. And then we talked about how Prophet Ibrahim was told to bring, build a place of worship. So him and his son, Prophet Ismail, together used bricks to build the holy Kaaba. Because the Kaaba was really, really tall, Prophet Ibrahim stood on a rock so that he could reach the top, right? And as he stood on that rock, it became soft where his feet were. And it left his footprints. And until today, when you go to the Holy Kaaba, you can see a special little golden cage in which you can see the stone where the footprints of Prophet Ibrahim are. And that is called Makam -e Ibrahim. Now, there was one more part of the story that we didn't discuss last time. So, Prophet Ibrahim got a dream at night. And in the dream, he was told 
to sacrifice his son, Prophet Ismail. He was shocked. He said, how can I sacrifice my own son? I love him. Again, the second night, he saw the same dream. And for the third night, again, he saw the same dream. Now, he was a prophet. And prophets, whatever they are told by Allah, they listen because they have so much faith. The Prophet Ibrahim went to Prophet Ismail and told him, Oh my son, this is what I saw. Allah has instructed me to sacrifice you. So Prophet Ismail, what did he say? Imagine if your daddy came to you and said that I have been told to sacrifice you, how would you react? You would run away, wouldn't you? You would say, no, 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 no. But Prophet Ismail said, of course, my father, if Allah has told you, then you must listen to Allah's command. So they went to a special area and Prophet Ibrahim prepared to sacrifice Prophet Ismail and covered his eyes. And guess what happened? When Prophet Ibrahim opened his eyes, he saw Prophet Ismail standing right in front of him. And instead of sacrificing Prophet Ismail, there was a sheep that was sacrificed. That is why when we go for Hajj, we all sacrifice a sheep in the name of Allah. And that meat of the sheep, half of it is eaten by the Hujjaj, the people who go for Hajj, and the rest is given to the poor people. That was an interesting story, wasn't it? Yeah, so we're going to watch a short video, which is going to remind us about, a little bit about the Zamzam water, okay? So sit back and enjoy it. Mama? I know, Zachariah, but don't you know that Islam teaches us to save water? Mm -mm. Did I ever tell you about the story of Zamzam? You mean special water from Mecca? Tell me the story, Mama. A long time ago, before the sacred mosque was built, Prophet Ibrahim brought his wife Haja and son Ishmael to the dry desert land of Mecca. It's so empty. Why did the Prophet Ibrahim bring his family here? Allah had commanded him to leave his beloved family in the desert as a test of faith. So they set up camp under a tree with only a bag of dates and a little water. And it wasn't long before that had finished. Baby Ishmael grew thirstier and thirstier, and his sweet mother could no longer bear it. Desperately in search of water, she left his son in the desert under the protection of Allah. Where did she go? Haja came to climb this mountain, Al Safa. By herself? Yes, and she saw no one. But again, she saw nothing. Haja knew Allah would provide for them, so she didn't give up. She ran back to our suffer and repeated this seven times. And then? To her surprise, she saw an angel stood before her eyes. The angel began digging until the waters of Zamzam flowed from that spot. Allah had provided for them in ways they couldn't even imagine. And that's why we walk between Al Safa and Al Marwa seven times so we may remember Hajj's struggle. 
Alhamdulillah. We are blessed to have clean water. And you didn't even have to climb the mountain for me. Yes. But remember, there are many mothers just like Harja, desperately in search of water today, then. I understand now, Mama. I won't waste water anymore. So are we going to waste water when we brush our teeth? No. Or when we're showering, are we just going to use so much water? No, we are not because there's so many people out there who don't have clean water, right? And we must thank Allah for this special blessing that he has given us, okay? So there's two more things that we do in Hajj that is very, very special. So one of the things is that we remember the sacrifice of Prophet Ibrahim, which I just told you about. And the other one is that we throw pebbles at a pillar called Jamarat. So what we do is we remember all the bad things that we do. So for example, if I say that I backbited about my friends, I'm going to take a pebble and I throw it at the shaitan. That pillar represents shaitan. And I tell Allah, I am not going to backbite or speak bad things ever again. I'm going to do my best. Or I'm going to try not to lie again. And I take a pebble and I throw it at the pillar and that pillar represents shaitan because shaitan is the one who whispers in our ears doesn't he he doesn't we don't like shaitan at all so now we are going to do a special song for all of you and what i want you to do is i want you all to copy the actions can you all do that so i want you all to stand up and you're going to copy the actions of the hajj all right and i hope you enjoy this because it's going to be a lot of fun So all of you stand up and get ready to do the actions together, okay? Thank you. 
did you all want to do that one more time? Yes? Should we do it one more time? Okay. All together, now that you know what it is, okay? Nice and loud and sing along, okay? <laughs>
into little balls like that and then stick it okay you're gonna need lots and lots of cotton wool all right so you can either just stick it roughly or you can just make it into tiny little balls like this and stick it all around okay if you have glue in your fingers it really sticks you can wash your hands if you want to okay that's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stick our cotton okay roll it up yes exactly well done and roll it up and stick okay So just have fun with it, okay? I'm going to give you a few minutes to get that done. It should look something like this. Take your time. Good job, Abbasali, Fatima and Zainab. Well done. Good job, Alirada. Mikhail Somji. Well done. Khadija. Hadi and Rukaya. Well done. Okay. Let's see, Mikhail. Yes, good job. Abbas, are you well done? You've done yours already. Awesome. Hussein Birani, good job. Sajid and Jamil, well done. Zahra Lalji, you're almost done as well. Fatima Walji, good job. Oh, Zahra and Ali Abdurrida, very nice. Zahra Walji. Well done, all of you. Samana Bimani. And we have Fatima Rantula. Nikdad Manji. Well done, all of you. Okay, so once you've done this, you're going to put this to the side and you're going to take out your black card. Okay? So this is where you need your black paper and your scissors, okay? You don't need so much of it. Just need a little bit, okay? okay. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the face of the sheet and the legs. So I'm gonna show you on the screen what it looks like so you can copy out the cutouts, okay? Okay, so try and cut it out. Doesn't have to be exact. Try your best. So you need two little legs and you need a face. Please ask an adult to help you because scissors are sharp, okay? You can either do the face first and then the ears, or you can do them both together. Whatever is easy for you. Okay? Once 
Steve got that out, show me, okay? So we can move forward. You need the face and the ears and the two feet. going. Have you done your kata with everybody? So I'm going to stick my feet first from behind the paper plate, okay? So from behind the paper like this. This and like that. Okay? So that's how the feet are going to look. All right. So using my glue stick, let's stick that on first. With lots of glue so that it doesn't get undone. You're going to have to hold it for a bit, for a few seconds, so that it sticks, okay? Hold it down tight. I can see you all having so much fun. So now with the face of my sheep, I cut the ears separately, so I'm going to stick his ears on now. Nice and tight. Amazing, Zahra. Abdul Razak, well done. Being awesome. Well done, Saman Abimani. That's a cute face. Have you got the legs as well? Are the legs done? So you need a face and you need the legs, okay? Very nice, Rukaya. Okay, so now we're going to put the googly eyes for the sheep, okay? So with your glue, you can take two googly eyes. If you don't have them, you can draw them. That's fine. Okay, stick the eyes on. Okay, and now we're going to stick the face onto the middle of the body. That's going to be very tricky because the glue sticks to the cotton. So, put some glue on the back of the head, and then you can stick it on. Just press it down gently, okay? Okay, how are you all getting along? Yeah? Amazing! Mikdad Manji, well done! Very cute sheep. That's very nice. So she looks something like this, okay? Amar Rahim, very nice. Atika Samar, Mikhail Somji. Khadija, so cute. Sajid, very nice. 
Amar Rahim, I saw that. Beautiful. Amazing. Ali Radha, very nice. Let's see. Hussein Virani, very good. Well done. That was fun, wasn't it? Yeah? So now you're going to remember this as the sheep that is to be sacrificed during the time of Hajj. Okay? Wow, look at that. Fatima and Zainab. Well done. Mahdi Awalji Abbasali. Amazing. Amazing work. Good job, Fatima and Zainab. You just need to stick the head on. And then we have Alia Jafar. Very nice. Rukaya Alarakia, so cute. I love it. Zahra and Ali Abdurazak, well done. Hadi and Rukaya. Hadi, your sheep needs eyes now. And Fatima Rantula, Kumail Rida, very nice. Amazing. I hope you all had so much fun today. Alimati and Salah, that's so cute. Good job. Atika Sumar, very nice. Atama Walji, Hussein Birani. Good job, all of you. Well done. Okay, so now you're going to remember the sheep as the sacrifice of Prophet Ibrahim and the sacrifice that we do when we go for Hajj. Inshallah, we pray to Allah. And we all get the opportunity to go and see the magnificent Kaaba, inshallah. I hope you enjoyed today's session. We're going to finish with our song, okay? So big arms, everyone. Big arms. There we go. Nice and loud, okay? Allah is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing that he cannot do. The rivers are his. The mountains are his. The stars are his and so are we. Allah is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing that he cannot do for you, and you, and you, and you, and for me. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. And I hope to see you next week, inshallah. Take care of yourselves. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon.